Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 7 Lesson 3 on Equivalent Ratios. Now we've been dealing with equivalent ratios basically the entire time we've been working with ratios. But we want to look at a few different ways of looking at them in today's lesson and using them in order to solve various problems. So let's jump right into it and introduce a kind of a, a, a review of how equivalent ratios work, right? So again, a ratio is just a comparison of two quantities that can be scaled up or down using multiplication or division. When one ratio is scaled into another ratio, we call these equivalent ratios. So let's just say I had a ratio of 10 cats to six dogs, right? For every 10 cats, there's six dogs. Well, I could scale that up by multiplying both of those numbers by three, and I would then have 30 cats to 18 dogs. Right? And that 30 cats to 18 dogs would be equivalent to 10 cats to 6 dogs. On the other hand, I could divide both of these numbers by 2 and get the ratio of 5 cats to 3 dogs. This would actually be the simplest, simplest form of this ratio because I can't divide the 5 and the 3 by any common factor or common divisor at that point. Sounds a lot like, like forming you know, equivalent fractions, right? When you multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same number, or when you're simplifying a fraction, you're dividing the top and the bottom by the same number. Very similar situation here, right? I can multiply both the numbers in a ratio, or I can divide both the numbers in the ratio. So let's kind of play around now with what's known as a double number line. This is a fantastic way of looking at equivalent ratios. Exercise number one. At a party, the ratio of kids to adults was 5 to 2. Letter A says, on the double number line above, show possibilities for the number of kids and the number of adults at the party. And again, this is very, very similar to tables, right? In fact, one might say it's just a different way of visualizing the table. Right? So what do we know? We know the ratio of kids to adults was 5 to 2. That means if there are 5 kids, there are two adults, right? That's just what it means, all right? And now we're gonna really kind of build these two number lines. The kid number line is gonna go in fives. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, etc. Whereas the adult number line, right, is gonna go by twos. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. So we can really kind of fill this in, right? Forget about like the adults just for a moment. The kid number line is gonna be 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, whereas the adult number line is going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And this really helps us visualize a lot of ratios that are equivalent to 5 to 2. For instance, 40 to 16, 20 to 8, 30 to 12, 10 to 4. All of those ratios are equivalent to the 5 to 2 ratio. And now that we've got this double number line, we can use it to answer a lot of different questions. Let me kind of move this out of the way. Let's take a look at letter B. For each of the following, the number of adults has been given. Give the number of kids that are at the party. Show your work on number 3. All right, so for instance, right? When the number of adults is six, how many kids are there? Well, that's a piece of cake, because here's six adults, and therefore, there must be 15 kids, all right? Likewise, when the adult number is 14, right here, right, then there has to be 35 kids. But of course, this kind of process breaks down a little bit when we look at number three, where there are 30 adults, and we're trying to figure out the number of kids. So I'd like you to pause the video right now and see if you can figure out how many kids there are if there are 30 adults. All right, well keep in mind, right, the fundamental ratio that we had here was that for every two adults, there were five kids, right? So how do we really get to this one? Well, we multiply both of those numbers by three, right? Two times three is six, 5 times 3 is 15. Yeah, times 3, times 3, right? Likewise, in this one, right, when we have that 2 adults to 5 kids, we go this by multiplying by 7 in each case. So here, 
right, if we've still got that ratio of 2 to 5, then the question is, what do we have to scale 2 by in order to get 30? Well, to get 30 adults, we would have to multiply the 2 by 15. So to get the number of kids, we'd have to multiply the 5 by 15. And when we do that, right, we get 75 kids. All right. And really, that's what all of these numbers really represent. This 5 to 2, that's just that ratio 5 to 2. But then 10 to 4 is taking that ratio, multiplying by 2. 15 to 6 is taking that ratio, multiplying by 3. 20 to 8, taking that ratio and multiplying by 4, etc. Right? And it's important to kind of understand that basic idea, right? That if we've got the simplest ratio, right, we can multiply both of those numbers in the ratio to get an equivalent ratio. Let's keep working on this. All right, another double number line. Exercise number two. In a recent basketball game, the ratio of points scored by Mia to the ratio to the points scored by Emily was four to three. If Emily scored 18 points, then use the number line below to show how many points Mia scored. Circle Mia's points on the number line. Then how could you have found this without using the number line? Anyway, pause the video now and see if you can figure out how many points Mia scored and then let's talk about how we can do it without the number line. Take a moment on this. Now you have to be a little bit careful here, right? Mia, right, the points scored by Mia to the points scored by Emily was four to three, right? So Mia has four points, Emily has three points. It could be very easy because the number four comes first and the number three comes second, to put the 4 here and the 3 here. That's not the case. So now, let's keep going, right? That means that Emily's number line is going to go by 3's. So it's going to be 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, etc. Mia's is going to go by 4. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, and 36. All right, so there's our double number line. Now, what do we know? Emily scored 18 points, right? So therefore, Mia must have scored 24. Okay? Now the question becomes, how could we have done that without the double number line? And this is where it gets to be kind of really cool, right? What do we know? We know that Mia, right, four points, Emily, three points, all right? And then what happens, right? Emily, we end up knowing, scores 18 points, right? And we want to know how many Mia scored. So what we really need to think of is what do we need to multiply the 3 by in order to get the 18? Well, we're going to multiply that by 6. And that means we have to multiply by 6 in this case as well. Right? And it's pretty much that easy. Right? Now, if it's not obvious what you have to multiply by to go from here to here, then you just divide, right? You just simply take the 18 divide by 3, and that gives us that scaling factor of 6. We can then use that to scale Mia's points from 4 up to 24. All right, let's keep going on this. Now, double number lines are great when you can kind of write everything out. But what if that would be too painful? Let's take a look at exercise number 3. A bread recipe calls for a flour to water ratio of 10 to 7. If 500 grams of flour is used in this recipe, how many grams of water need to be added? Use the number line below to illustrate how you found your answer. All right, so again, right, we know that the ratio of flour to water is 10 to 7. And we could keep writing out number lines, right? The next one would be 20 and 14, 30 and 21, 40 and 28, etc. But man, would that take a while to get up to 500 grams of flour. So, we have to figure out a different way to do it, and it's all about that kind of scaling factor. So pause the video now 
and see if you can figure out how many grams of water are needed if we have 500 grams of flour. All right, well, the question is, what would we have to scale 10 by to get up to 500? Now, for some people, it's obvious that the answer there is 50. We would have to multiply 10 by 50 to get 500. But if you're not sure, of course, what you'd then want to do is 500 divided by 10, right? That's going to give me 50, and that's my scaling factor, all right? 500 divided by 10 gives me my scaling factor. So then we have to multiply by 50 as well here. So if I have 50 times 7, right, that tells me I must have 350 grams of water. All right, it's all about knowing what we scaled one of these things by and then using it to scale the other. All right, let's keep working on this. Here we go. Exercise number four. Two out of every five people in a small town voted in a local election. Fill in the following. The ratio of the number of people who voted to the total number of people is blank to blank. Why don't you go ahead and fill that in? All right, well, it's pretty simple, right? It says two out of every five. You oftentimes hear things or ratios phrased in that way. Two out of five, especially when you're comparing a part to a whole, right? For every five people in the town, two of them voted. So the ratio of the number of people who voted to the total number of people, that's just two to five. All right, now letter B. If there are a total of 320 people in town, determine how many of them voted. Show how you found your answer. All right, well, this is gonna take a little bit more work. So I'd like you to pause the video now. You know, I've got this kind of mini double number line here. See if you can use that along with multiplication and division, possibly, to figure out the number of voters. Pause the video now. Well, I have to think about what I scaled five by in order to get 320. To do that, I really need to do 320 divided by five. Let's see what we get there. That'd be a six, 30, 20, four, 20, zero. So that means I must have scaled by 64 to get that 320. That means I also have to scale the two. So now I'm going to take 64 times 2, and that's going to give me 128. All right, so 128 voters. Whoops. All right, letter C. Finding your answer in B was the same as multiplying the number 320 by what fraction? So wait, wait a second, let's go back to this for a second. Right, I don't see any fractions here. And yet, yet, I could have found 128 by taking that 320 and multiplying by a single fraction. What would that fraction be? Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. Well, I'm taking 320, I'm dividing by five, taking that result and multiplying by two. And that is by definition, by definition, the same as multiplying by two-fifths. Again, think about it for a second. If I took two-fifths and I multiplied by 320, and again, the answer to this problem is just two-fifths. It's not two-fifths times 320. But if I took 320 and I multiplied by two-fifths, the whole point there is I'm gonna take 320, divide it by five, right? That gives me that 64. And then I'm gonna multiply the 64 by two, and that gives me 128. So let's use that idea for letter D. If the total number of people was 670, how many people voted? Show the product you used to find your answer. Well, think about this for a moment, right? This is a special type of a ratio where we're comparing a part of a whole to the whole entirely, right? And what we're really saying when we say two out of five people voted is we're saying two fifths of the people voted. Two-fifths of the people voted, which is why we can just multiply by two-fifths, right? So if I've got 670 people and I want to know how many people voted, 
then I can just multiply by the fraction 2 fifths. Now don't get me wrong, the work is literally exactly the same that we did up in, really, for letter B, which is that I still have to do 670 divided by 5. Move this out of the way, let's get this. 1, 5, 17, 3, 15, 20, 4, 20. Ah, oh, I love long division. All right, so we do this, we get 134. And then I do 134 times 2, 8, 6, 2. So if there were 670 people, then 268 of them must have voted to keep that 2 to 5 ratio, or 2 fifths of the people voted. All right. Now again, this is a special case. Many times I'm not going to particularly want to, to come up with the answer to a ratio problem by multiplying by a fraction. But sometimes you can, especially if the ratio is simply the ratio of a part to a whole. Let's do one more problem. Here we go. Exercise number five. A chicken can lay three eggs in seven days. So the ratio of eggs to days is three to seven. How many days would it take a chicken to lay 60 eggs? Show the process that leads to your answer. Awesome. Why don't you pause the video now and see if you can figure out the answer to this. All right, well, here we go. You could lay it out with a fraction, you could lay it out with a table, you could lay it out with a double number line, or you could just do the following, right? Right, I've got three eggs and I've got seven days. I wanna make that into 60 eggs and a certain number of days. Well. What would I have to multiply 3 by in order to get 60? For many of you, you can just look at this problem and say, oh, I would have to multiply by 20. But if that's not obvious, then of course you'd want to go over here and take 60 and divide it by 3. And again, certainly if it's obvious, you know, you don't have to, but you'd get times 20. But then that means we have to scale this by 20. And again, if it's obvious to you that 7 times 20 is 140, great. If it's not obvious, then you just take 20, multiply by 7 over here, and get that 140. So it's going to take 140 days to lay 60 eggs and one tired chicken, or at least a tired hen. Let's wrap this up. So yet again today, we worked with the amazingly important idea of a ratio and how to visualize a ratio. For the first time, we really played around a lot with the double number line idea. And these are, again, great ways to sort of think about ratios, visualize them, work with this idea of scaling upwards especially. Um, but we also looked at things like, you know, just using multiplication and division in order to think about ratios and solve problems involving ratios as well. All right. We'll get more work with all of these ideas in future lessons. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.